Hello and welcome to this edition of the Angels and Destiny show. Why is this show called this, you may ask? So I'll tell you, the accepted mean of angel is messenger and the accepted mean of destiny is to make firm establish. So my guest and I bring you messages to establish what you need to know in the present. And of course, I like working with angels and the calmness they bring. Now, in a moment, I will introduce you to my wonderful guest, Nancy Reed. But before that, I'd like to say thank you so much for watching this show live at a later date as it means a lot to both Nancy and I to connect with like-minded people. Now, if you've never met me before, then my name is Ray, and I'm the founder of Radiant Angel Energy, and I'm a guide who helps you remember your divine presence so that you can heal your past, create your future, and transform your present. To expand your consciousness, understand your spiritual path, get clarity on your next steps, and to take charge of your destiny so that you could spread your wings and soar in this lifetime and find your life purpose. Now, each episode of this show covers various themes of your journey a mini guided meditation or angel oracle card reading with the wisdom of my wonderful guests, like today's guest, Nancy Reed, about manifesting perfectly imperfect sustainable happiness. Now, Nancy is a self-worth coach, author, speaker, spiritual teacher and quantum manifestation specialist who supports heart-centred, sensitive, intuitive, successful women value their self at a level of their biggest dream, not their doubts. Even before their dream fully comes true without the paralysis of perfection, imposter syndrome, self-judgment or comparisons, by using deliberate kindness and curiosity as the cornerstones to invite total transformation and manifestation of sustainable happiness and abundance on every level. Now, Nancy Nurtures inspires perfectly imperfect active decision makers and life participants who believe in the reality of their dreams and who share an even bigger collective dream of manifesting the best life experience, not only for themselves, but all those who share the world with them. Nancy supports clients privately and within group settings online. She's a frequent speaker and podcast guest, thanks to her award-winning book, Happily Ever Now, capturing the heart and curiosity of readers worldwide. She also is the founder of 32 Favours, a deliberate kindness project. Now with testimonials such as, Nancy's calm approach helped relax my nervous energy of filling space with words. She reminded me that I don't need to prove myself as an extension of who I am, not separate from now or later. Thank you so much for holding that space and providing the opportunity to see myself from a different different place. It was magical. And Nancy is always super kind, supportive. Before I worked with her, I was looking for clarity on my current offer and wanted to explore more deeply who I am as a coach. She offered great insight and asked me questions that allowed me to put into words what was bouncing around my head. I'm so much more confident with my coaching process now and excited to continue working on my business. So without further delay, hello, Nancy, and welcome to the Angels and Destiny show. How are you today? Hello, my dear. I am so lovely. Thank you so much for inviting me. Ah, you are welcome. So before we get into this fascinating conversation, I want to remind you that not only can you share this video, but you can also ask questions, leave comments and thoughts, as both Nancy and I want to be part of this show. So please don't be shy. So Nancy, why don't you tell us more about your personal journey and how we can become our own gentle agent in our perfectly imperfect sustainable happiness? Yeah. So the thing is, is that my entire life, I've been one of those people who could tell the energy of a room or of a space or even got inside of it. And, you know, maybe some of you can relate to this where I've always been highly intuitive, highly empathic and energy has really spoken to me. And even as a little girl, when I didn't really understand what any of this meant, other than it just didn't seem like kind of the normal thing that my other friends were going through, that I have been able to use that ability to be able to hold space for others, to be able to meet them where they are. And at first it seemed almost overwhelming because I couldn't really tell what energy was mine and what belonged to someone else. And so for a long time there, I got really good at using these gifts to actually become more of a chameleon and adapt myself 
to whatever sort of energy was presenting itself to me. And I was really good at hiding in plain sight. But every once in a while, there'd be something that would allow me to sort of dip my toe into unveiling my real, you know, proclivities and everything else like that. And people would be like, wow, like, how did you know that? Or, you know, how did you, how, how did you sense that or something? And then all of a sudden, I would feel exposed. I would feel like that I needed to defend my intuitions and, and what could I defend it with, right? How could I prove something? This is a world that at that point especially was much more empirically based, much more that was about, well, what does science say? And how can we you know, test and retest things and all of those things? And in some ways, that can be very, very, very helpful. But in this personal development, personal growth space and spiritual development and spiritual growth space, some of the things that we know, we know, and we can't explain how we know them, but we do know them. And the more that we can begin to become, like I like to say, the gentle agent of our own experiences, then what that really means is that nothing outside of us is determining our internal experience anymore. And so that we're not giving away our sense of agency or power or decision making to anything outside. Even if things seem chaotic and, and you know all the changes in the world, we are that consistency and constancy by knowing the truth that we are and aligning with that. And then you get to show up as her right? Everywhere you go. And so there's no real effort in it. You're being you. All of you is you. And the reason why I frame this with the word gentle is because there's no judgment. There's no, and that that actually really invites this experience of sustainable happiness. Now, a lot of people can be, you know, kind of skeptical about this and you should be, you should be like, well, how could you sustain happiness, right? Because you can't control what happens outside of you. And I totally get that. And you're right. But I'm not calling it just sustainable happiness. I'm calling it perfectly imperfect sustainable happiness. That means that <clears throat> you are the sole decision maker of when you get to choose your own happiness over anything else the world tells you that you should be feeling instead. And this isn't about denial. This isn't about bypassing anything or ignoring something. This is about looking fully, but without judgment, preconceived, without assumptions and comparisons and shaming and blaming. It's with an entirely different set of vocabulary where we are looking with gentleness, curiosity, kindness, spaciousness, wonder, you know, all of these things where we're not attached to a specific outcome, either happening or not happening. And when you can be in that place, then it allows you to navigate everything with actually the same certainty and clarity that comes from within you. And then you get to adapt to any situation outside of you as it changes, because that is the one constant in life is that there is change. But by you knowing who you are and being empowered by that truth, rather than feeling like you need to be these different versions of you, depending on who you're interacting with, where you're interacting, or what is happening, that when you make the consistency be the truth that is you, then everything else gets to be navigated from that place of clarity and certainty. And now you're in that energy and that essence of flow and not force. Yeah, that's that's really quite um, interesting because obviously in today's society, it's so difficult to actually, you know, stay stay in that um, that path. You know, and obviously we go back to when, when you were a child and obviously, um, you know, some a few years ago, you know, um, well, when we were children, things weren't as they were um, now. So did you have a sense of trying to stay in that happiness when you were um, younger or had that not really come into your mindset at, at that time? You were just kind of like aware of these um, energies and, you know, did you find yourself reacting to them, becoming these energies or 
um, you know, turning uh, the energy comes to you and you're suddenly put yourself in a different energy. How did it kind of like mm -hmm. all work? <clears throat> yeah. So in the very beginning, it was definitely that it was that I felt overwhelmed that I was like, you know, wait, I was feeling energetic and now I'm tired. What happened? Oh, I just interacted with this person or this group or something like that. You know, so hmm, maybe it's not real, actually. Maybe the tiredness or the fatigue that I'm feeling isn't mine. Maybe it's somebody else's, but I didn't know what to do with it. So I, I began to be able to identify it as a child, but it was less about happiness at that point. It was more just about me wanting to be normal and not draw attention to myself. And literally, like I said, hiding in plain sight. Like I did the best I could to take on different roles. So I loved doing speeches. I loved doing, you know, acting and plays and musicals and singing where I had a character that I was playing because then I felt safe. I felt like the role was defining what I was allowing to have others have access to versus when it was just me as me, I felt totally exposed totally vulnerable, totally weird compared to all of my friends. And I didn't feel that there was space for me to be me. And so I probably came across pretty aloof sometimes to people, even though I felt things really, really, really deeply because there was part of me that that was the best I could do was just like, if I don't get involved too much, if I don't, you know, act too many questions, if I'm not like too accessible here, then I can at least do the best job I can to not fall apart because right now I am not knowing how to do anything else other than that. You know, and I, I took criticism really personally. I've always been a lifelong recovering now perfectionist and that I was so afraid of other people calling me a fraud. I was so afraid of other people thinking I'd fail in some way. And because I was always giving 110%, 120% if I could, you know, if I, if I got the A, it was like, wait a minute, where's the A plus? Let me see what I can do. And that was just within me. I came in like that, right? And, and I think part of that, again, was thinking that if I could just be perfect, then nobody would see the cracks that I was so afraid that if they really saw, if they really knew me, they would just think that I was bizarre. They would think that, you know, who is this little girl that has all these weird dreams that either come true or that are super lucid and that I could like interact with and everything like that. I mean, I had these experiences from very, very, very young. I remember seeing like an angelic presence when I was a little girl after we had been snowed in at our cabin with my grandparents. And I told my grandma, I said, I said, oh, do you see the angel? And she was like, what? And I'm like, look, she's right out there. And I was so little at the time. I think I was between two and three or something like that. And so my grandma told me the story a year later because she was like, you know, she's like, there's no way you could have <clears throat> made that up. Like you, you were too little to, to have, you know, made that up. You hadn't heard about this or anything and you were describing it so clearly. And so my grandma drew this picture actually, and I still have it of this beautiful, like, you know, image basically of this luminescent being. And, and I just felt so much comfort from, from that. But I didn't really know what it was. And again, it wasn't something that I was going to talk about with like my friends or anything like that. But people used to come up to me like on the street. Uh, I remember in San Francisco one time with, with my father, you know, one of the big cities here in Northern California. And we were walking down the street and this woman just out of nowhere <laughs> came up to me. And I was just a little girl. And she's like, oh, your aura or something like that. And I was like, ah, you know, like, who's seeing this? Oh God, they're going to, you know, tar and feather me or something like that, you know? And, and I was so uncomfortable. So I've always been the reluctant healer, right? The reluctant coach, the reluctant, like all of any of that, like spirituality and everything like that. I, I was so reluctant because I was so afraid that if people started asking me questions and I wasn't able to defend myself enough, that then they would think that I was something bad or that I was something that, you know, was sinful or anything else like that, even before I really even understood those, those concepts. And, and so I just did a really good job of learning how to become invisible. Like I wrote an essay when I was <clears throat> in middle school where the teacher asked us what superpower we would want. And everyone was asking for flying. Like for some reason, everyone wanted flying. And I wrote about invisibility 
because I thought if I could be invisible, then nobody would notice me because people always notice me, you know, and it wasn't just because I look like Barbie or something like that. It was the, because they just noticed me. They picked up on some energy, some essence, some presence. And it's what gave people the permission to come and share their life stories with me, especially like when I was in college and I got so overwhelmed by this because again, I just didn't know how to navigate it. Um, cause I, I never would usually see them again after that. They would just come and they would sit down and like, tell me their life story. And I'd be like, hi, like, <laughs> you know, and, and it was just like, you know, and then they would just disappear. And so I started like wearing big headphones and things like that. I kid you not. And it's just comical. Right. And, 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 and it's still, people would still come and talk to me. <laughs> and so, so finally, after a really serious car accident that led me to this near death experience where I had this life review of seeing all of my life through the lens of that the only things that were being shown was any intentional or unintentional unforgiveness or resentments or unkindness in a relationship between me and another person and i was like why am i being shown this i'm about to die and i really thought i was going to we went over this cliff and i was the passenger and so when we survived and i crawled out literally being buried in dirt thinking i was dead um that I ended up having this really serious shoulder injury, twisting my thoracic spine. But I had that vision that stuck with me about that I was shown all of these relationships and like my part in them, whether it was intentional or unintentional. And I was like, there must be something to that. There must be a reason that I was shown this as the last thing that I thought I was going to see before I died. And so I began to have these terrible recurring nightmares about the accident and terrible PTSD, post-traumatic stress, you know? And I was, I was seeing the accident replay again and again and again, and there were always different drivers in the driver's seat. So it was different, usually men from my life who'd been abusive or somehow, because that was one of my roles that I played in life, and, you know, being the face of innocence. Um, and then eventually the dreams actually led to my own face being in the driver's seat. And I recognized and remembered that as soon as I was deciding between going in the car with this man that I was on a date with, he'd been drinking and I didn't know it. I heard my inner voice, that inner voice that had always spoken to me my entire life. And she said, don't go. And I was like, but he's cute. I like him. Like, this is so silly. Why would I not go in this car? And I got in the car. But that same inner voice spoke one more time as we were going over the edge of the cliff. And this time she said, push up. And I was like, okay, I'm listening. And so I pushed <laughs> up with my hand and I wedged my hand into the roof of the car. And that kept me from hitting the dashboard or going through the windshield because the seatbelt wasn't self-adjusting. It was an old fashioned sports car. And the person that had ridden before me was much bigger. So I would have been much more seriously injured or who knows, even, you know, killed. And, and so when I saw that face in the dream, I was like, oh, that's right. I did know. And I didn't listen, but I was shown something. So I'm going to listen. And so I, you know, couldn't go to sleep anyways. I got up and I picked out this journal that I'd been given as a present for my birthday a few months before. And I still remember the cover and it said, awaken from the dream within. And I began to journal and write. And the first entry I ever wrote was called the instant is all there is. And it was all about that. There is no past that the only thing that exists is now and that there's nothing that can separate us from the love that we are connected to and that that love that is from the source that I believe, which is God, right? And, and, and so all of this came through and I began to journal and journal and journal and journal and journal whenever I felt that I compelled to do so, but there was no forcing it. There was no, you know, urgency to it. It was just like, I just started writing and then I knew I was done and I would close the book and then I would do it another day maybe. And sometimes it wasn't every day. It was like every other day. But after about three months of going through this, I was noticing I wasn't in as much pain and I was sleeping a little bit better. And so I thought there was something to it. And so I shared it with my mother who had been a longtime teacher and student of A Course in Miracles, a spiritual thought system. Uh -huh. And she introduced me to a friend of hers who was connected to the man that became my mentor, Dr. Ken Wapnick, the original teacher of A Course in Miracles, and showed him my writings. And so he called me about, you know, probably two, three weeks after that or something like that. And he was like, hey, is this the famous Nancy? And I was like, what? Like, <laughs> who is this? And he's like, oh, my name is Ken Wapnick. I'm a good friend of your mom's. And, uh, you know, a friend of hers showed me your writings. So what do you think about all this? And I was like, 
I don't even know. I'm like, I just, I feel them and, and they're really beautiful and lovely. And, and, and I feel like that they're helpful in, in, in some way. And he said, that's it. He's like, that's awesome. He said, don't make a big deal about it. Don't take it too seriously. He's like, just write when you want to write. Don't ever force it. Don't ever push it. And don't ever judge it. And he said, and if you want, I'll be here with you. So you can send me any of the entries that you're writing and we can talk about them. And he's like, and I hear you have these kind of dreams. And he said, we can talk about dreams because he's also a psychologist, right? Yeah. And, and so I was like, oh, wow. Okay. And then he said, well, if you trust me at all, and for some reason I did right away. And he said, make me this promise that as long as you're agreeing to this writing, that you won't read any other spiritual texts. Because at that point, I'd never opened A Course in Miracles book. Even though my mom had been studying it and teaching study groups, it was just a blue book that was sitting around in yeah. our house. And I was like, you know, like, oh, what is this? Like, what are these people coming over for? And, and you know, but I couldn't deny that my mother was definitely a kinder and a happier person since, yeah. since she'd been practicing that and that the relationships I'd seen her have were healthier and happier too. So I made him that promise and I said, sure. Okay, no problem. I won't open the blue book or any other spiritual book. I'll just journal whenever I feel called to do so. And he's like, fantastic. So I kept my promise and it was like six months later and I'd been sending him messages. He gave me his personal phone number. He's like, call me anytime, talk to me about anything. So it had been really, really, really supportive and helpful. And after about six months of that, he called me one day and he said, okay, today's the day. And I was like, well, what do you mean? And he said, today's the day you get to open the blue book. And I was like, oh, well, <laughs> where do I open it to? And he's like, you'll know, just open it. And I did. And I opened it to the section called The Forgotten Song, which is remembering our true identity, right? That is still that oneness joined as one with God and that we haven't separated, that we haven't left that love and that extension of love that we are connected to infinitely. And it was so beautiful. And I was like, oh, wow, this feels really familiar, even though I'm just seeing it. And he said, yeah, it's a little bit like you're writing, right? And I said, yeah, a lot, actually. And he was like, well, that's because truth is true. And he said, so your form might be a little different, but there's that same truth that's running through it. And he said, so continue to write or don't continue to write, but I'd love to meet you. Would you come down to one of my classes? And I said, yeah. So I like booked a trip and went down and that began the relationship that I had with him until his untimely death in 2013. Wow. How amazing is that, that, <laughs> you know, something like an accident led to, to, to those synchronicities um, and those mm -hmm. connections that, that went along and how you were kind of like um, connected really to his energy with the fact that you were both writing similar things but in your own uh, um, way of doing it, which is, you know, which which to me, you know, is, 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 as I see, or, um, as you do, you know, we are all one, but we have our own unique identity within that oneness. Um, and that, you know, that you've just you've just explained that really well about how we all have that same thoughts, those same ideas, but we'll express them slightly differently, but they still come back to the same. So that's amazing and absolutely brilliant. <laughs> Um, st a story there. So how did that lead you on to, um, you know, starting to work with other people? Well, so one of the things was that, you know, Ken was not a psychic by any means, but he was highly intuitive and highly skilled in psychology. And so he told me that he had this sense that in all of my, you know, previous quote unquote lifetimes or choices that I'd always left early because I had this sense of ambivalence about being here or not being here because I was afraid of being seen for what I really was. And that this lifetime was a choice and that I got to make this choice. And this is why I kept on having these recurring like near death experiences almost was because I, he said I had this ambivalence. And then until I made the decision to be here fully, I would continue to keep having those in their own way. So like I had a horse fall on top of me, I had all these random things, happen. <laughs> you know, nearly, I mean, yeah, again, yeah, ran into a wall, 
like in a haunted house that was everything was fake and then there was one real wall i ran it yeah so you know i mean it's comical but but he told me that that was all part of that and so so he was always always making light of things he wasn't wasn't that he didn't like you know take you seriously but he also reminded you not to take yourself too seriously and to stay lighthearted and to come from kindness and his kindness to me is just timeless like there's a line in a course of miracles that says that you know demonstrate that i do not die but that i live in you and so like when he died um very unexpectedly then i really took that to heart where i was like okay so how can i demonstrate that the love and the kindness because that was always what he represented lives in me and oh isn't that interesting that we initially connected over me seeing that piece about kindness so there must be something to this and he had told me when he was telling me about all these past versions of me and getting to choose to no longer have this ambivalence he said there's no pressure in this and he said this is fully your choice but if you choose to be here and stay here he said this time around you can be tremendously helpful to others because you can show them that it is possible to go through all of these things and still be connected to that love to that timelessness to the reality that is eternal right but you can be here in this world you can be walking around just like everybody else breathing in the oxygen and letting out the co2 and eating the food and doing all these things right making yourself be so that you can remember that you're in this world but not of it right and 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 so i took that to heart and then after he died and i was so just like i felt untethered from my existence when he died like it was just i'd never ever ever felt anything like that before and i was really conscious that i wasn't going to bypass the grief that i wasn't going to say oh well i'm a spiritual person and so therefore <laughs> it doesn't matter that somebody died and i'm just gonna you know him and ha and you know kumbaya through this no like i very much went through the grief but without judgment of it and i i, I just experienced it and i didn't deny it but i didn't let it consume me either yeah. right so and i i, I talked to him every day I talked to him every day. His voice was the voice that was playing in the background when I nearly died, uh, giving birth to my daughter, and 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 that I was playing one of his meditations actually on kindness in the background. And so so he's always been there. And it wasn't until that moment of nearly dying with my daughter that I finally feel like that I made a very 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 conscious decision to no longer have that ambivalence. And so ever since then, knock on wood, I haven't had the near death experiences. And, um, and I have been, you know, much more light just as a person. Like I don't take myself so seriously. I can laugh about my mistakes and my flaws and this, and that's where the whole perfectly imperfect comes. See, when you take perfection off the table, then everything else is literally available to you. As long as you believe you're worthy of it right and and it doesn't mean that there's a guarantee that things are gonna you know show up and this and this and that but when you approach your happiness from this perfectly imperfect lens then that means you're always succeeding that means that you're always doing the best you can and sure we have moments when we forget we're going to right you're absolutely going to forget you're going to feel the effect of something. You're going to feel victimized by that person that said that thing. And that's okay. If you can look at your resistance to practicing that sustainable happiness in that experience without judgment, then you're actually practicing the experience of choosing your own sustainable happiness, right? So it's, it's like you being that gentle agent and having that gentle agency over your experience. It changes everything. And it allows you to be fully you without needing to just give the highlights of your life, without needing to give the edited version of you. You get to just say, yep, this is me, you know, <laughs> perfectly imperfect. And, 
And it's not that you don't try anymore. It's not that you're not striving. It's not that you're not having goals or anything like that, but it's just, you come from a lighter heart. And so you show up lighter and you leave lighter footsteps and you empower others to know that it's okay for them too to try things. It's okay to not know the outcome. It's okay. It really is. And they were all in this together. And I believe that we're either walking each other shoulder to shoulder together as one or none at all. Yeah, beautifully said. So as, as we say, you know, because everyday life really does get, you know, um, on, on, top, on top of people. So if someone's find it really difficult to actually go, act, you know, actually, um, I'm perfectly imperfect, um, y- you know, I, I, I'm just, there's just something, how do, how do they get into that mindset, into that space that they, you know, they can be that perfectly imperfect for happiness? Well, so a really good place to start in my own experience and that of my clients that I've seen too, is what I call deliberate kindness. And so what we do is they can join my experience that I have called 32 favors, which is about sharing kindness with deliberate intention, right? There's nothing random about it. And and that that that's broken down into these four different themes. And so the first of the four themes is about kindness to others, right? So a lot of times what's really interesting is that even if we feel really bad about ourselves, even if you know you're feeling like that where's my value where's my worth if you see somebody else struggling all of a sudden you're like oh i can give a helping hand to them but there's this part that doesn't believe you're worthy of receiving that helping hand right and and so again if you can meet yourself there with gentleness not judgment and you can extend that kind words kindness outwards then what ends up happening very unexpectedly, but also completely expectedly, is that every time you are extending that intentionality of kindness and gentleness and love, you're actually experiencing the essence of it as well within yourself. And so you're actually building your own self-love tank, your own self-fulfillment, right? But you're not having to do it outwardly (laughs) like you're just you know you're making the decision to say oh i'm doing it for this person right and then little by little though you look back and you go oh but i feel good i feel better so that must mean that i'm not apart from the experience of it i'm actually a part of the experience right and then from there it becomes less effort to build and then you can start to really look at oh, well, I do have worth. I do have value. So I am worthy of receiving that same intentional and deliberate kindness that I shared so freely outside, inside. So what can I do to receive more of that inside? And then we go into our third theme, which is about sharing deliberate kindness on every level. So that means to really infuse it into all of your experiences right? Where nothing is excluded from it. And then the final piece of all of this is perfectly imperfect, sustainable happiness. So that is how you arrive there is in those final eight days of the experience, then you get to experience that. And what I've seen for people is this huge, just beautiful circle right? Where they start out in one place feeling like they're running as fast as they can to stay in place. Who are they? They're not worthy. They're not, they don't have enough followers. They don't have whatever it is, not enough letters after their name. But when they start to begin to try on this idea that, oh, well, so the kindness I'm sharing outwards, I'm actually a part of that too. And so that means I'm getting it, quote unquote, receiving it inside of me. And I don't have the defenses to it because I thought I was doing it for somebody else. And I could hide kind of behind that. But guess what? My heart is feeling lighter. My heart is feeling bigger. Well, then maybe I am worthy. And then that's the second theme, which is being your own Valentine, right? So really allowing yourself to not only be your best friend, but to be your greatest love too. And and to come from that place of infinite expansion and expression. 
Beautiful, beautiful. And if anyone um, is watching and they've got any questions or comments or, um, that you want to share or any questions you want to ask about this, then please or, um, do so uh, in the comments um, and we will get to, uh, we'll come back to answer those for you. Um, so that kind of leads us on nicely to, as you know, um, I do uh, guide meditations and angel oracle card readings. And each week I like to ask my guests what they would like me to do for themselves and those watching. So Nancy, what would you like me to do? I would love to receive a guided meditation. Perfect. We will do a guided meditation, but we're also going to do a guided meditation with a card. Because oh, I like sweet. <laughs> we get the best of both worlds then um but i'm not going to tell anyone what, i'm not going to tell anyone what the card is um that we're going okay. to do the uh, guide meditation on perfect okay so nancy and everyone watching if you want to close your eyes and as you do so take a deep breath in and on the out breath just release everything that doesn't need to be in this space. Take another deep breath in and on the out breath, just release what doesn't need to be here. And allow your breathing to fall into its natural rhythm. Every in breath relaxing you more and more. And every out breath, just releasing anything that no longer serves you and just take your awareness to the top of your head and as you do see fully imagine or know the whole of your head starting to relax and just feel that relaxation moving down into your brow into your temples your eyes your nose, your ears, your cheeks, your mouth and your jaw, just feeling so relaxed. As this relaxation moves down into your neck, down into your shoulders, all the way down your arms to your hands and your fingertips. As this relaxation moves into your upper body and you feel your chest muscles relax, your stomach muscles relax, all of the muscles in your back start to relax. As this relaxation moves down into your hips, your pelvis, your buttocks sinking you deeper down where you are sitting. As this relaxation moves all the way down your legs, all the way down to your feet and your toes. And your whole body is just so relaxed. And I want you now to safely imagine or know yourself standing in a field and in the distance you can see a beautiful village but around you are trees maybe a couple of other people you can see sheep in the distance on the fields and it just feels so magical here the sun beats down in your skin, warming it. But there's a gentle breeze that just floats across your skin. And you can hear the rustling of the leaves of the trees. And you hear the voices of these people talking. And as you listen to their conversation, it sounds so familiar to you. It's as if they're talking about you, to you, through you. But it's their own experiences that they're talking about. But it seems so real 
to you, that it's your story they're telling. And you know that you're standing there in the light of truth, that you're listening to the truth, that all is one, all is connected. And the whispering of the leaves on the tree speak the same message to you. So I'm just going to leave you for a moment or two. What are these messages coming through? What are you hearing? What do you know? And just allow this to come to you, whether you hear it, you see it, you feel it, or you know it. Just let it come. So those words just drift into you. You know that you're discovering the truth about who you truly are, why you are here, why we are all here. You stand in the light of truth. And just feel that beautiful energy flow all the way through you, creating a beautiful golden light within you that radiates out from your heart, surrounds you. It's your beautiful glowing ball of golden energy. And you're going to bring that back with you. And in a moment, I'm going to count from one to five. And when I get to five, you'll be back fully present, bringing back that beautiful energy, that knowledge, that wisdom, that golden glow, ready to carry on with the rest of your day or have a good night's sleep. So coming back now, one, coming further back, two, further back, three, making sure you're in your body, further back, four, move your body, wingle your fingers and toes, Five, all the way back, fully present. Open your eyes if you've got some water, drink some water. And welcome back. Mm. So how was that? That was so lovely. Thank you. Ah, you're welcome. And anyone as you're coming back into this, let us know in the comments. Um, how that went went for you. So the card that came out for you and everyone watching and um, what you needed to know for your highest good was discovering truth. You stand in the light of truth, which is so mm -hmm. apt for what you've been talking about, um, mm -hmm. about, about today, you know, and it's real confirmation um, about what you're doing and, you know, what you're bringing out into the world. So that is absolutely brilliant. And it's reminding everyone who's watching, you know, you are your own truth. You know, you don't need to worry about the truth of others. Know that you are your own truth um, and allow yourself to be perfectly imperfect. <laughs> Which is which is something we 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 all are, and they, and funny enough, I've been using that for a long long while. Uh, it's, I've oh, got, fantastic! Yeah, yeah. Well, or, along the lines of uh, Mary Poppins, you know, practically perfect, not quite, but practically oh, yes. perfect. Uh, yes, 
yes. along the way, which I thought was which I thought was absolutely good. So, Nancy, do you have any <laughs> insights or thoughts or last words of wisdom to leave our viewers? Mm. Well, what I would say is that always remember and gently remind yourself that now is always the perfectly imperfect time to begin living your best life and that you get to choose when that now is now and that really is all the time that exists beautiful words thank you so much um excellent way to uh to end the show so i hope everyone you've enjoyed this conversation and found insightful because i know i definitely have so if people want to connect with you nancy how do they do that well, they can find me on Facebook under Nancy Reed, and that's N-A-N-C-I-R-E-E-D. They can also connect with me as a fellow heart-centered woman via my private Facebook community, which is called Sparkle Circle. And they also can go to my main website, which is Nancy Reed, N-A-N-C-I-R-E-E-D.com. And there's also a page there if they scroll just a little bit that has the latest links that are the most important things I'm launching, things that I'm offering, free gifts, lots of good things, and also past podcast recordings and speaking engagements and things like that as well. So they can get to know me, but send me a message, send me a friend request, um, mention where you heard all about me and I'd love to connect with you. Beautiful. And what I will do is I will put the uh, links in the comments after the show so that people just literally need to click on it and they can go straight and they can go straight there um, without having to type it in. So thank you so much, Nancy, for sharing your wisdom. It's been absolutely brilliant listening to you talking and you've literally been glowing the whole way through this conversation, <laughs> which is absolutely wonderful. It's just a stone has just come. I can see why when you're a child, people just came up to you because you have that glow energy around you. Um, so thank that, you that, so that, much. Absolutely beautiful. <laughs> And of course, you know, to everyone watching, if you are now ready to remember your divine presence and step onto your spiritual multidimensional path, but you feel lost, confused, stuck or alone, then please feel free to reach out and connect with me and we can see where you are now and how you can move forward to actually take charge of your destiny so that you can spread your wings and soar. And of course, you can receive a free future life progression recording to discover your destiny by seeing into your future to get guidance and clarity that you can use in your current life, as well as a couple of other free gifts by signing up to my email list. And again, thank you everyone so much for watching. And I'd like to invite you to share this video as I'm sure there are more people who feel lost and want to get clear on their destiny, just like you. And of course, if you're watching this on YouTube, then please feel free to subscribe to my channel and hit that bell button to be notified when the show goes live where I post new guide meditations. And please do like, comment, um, share my posts, the same with any um, social media that Nancy um, creates as well, because every time you like, subscribe, comment, share, it helps get our message out there to help more people. And you're part of that ripple effect of, you know, bringing everyone into this greater sense of oneness community and living that higher um, potential guideline. And of course, I look forward to you all joining me same time, same place next week. Take care, bye. <laughs> bye.